Just to give everyone a heads up on time, I'm going to go ahead and swear Mr. Werfel in in just a moment and restart this second panel and allow him to do his opening statement, and we'll watch time on votes and, uh, and see what happens. So you're welcome to be able to sit in and be a part of this as well, but we'll get started in just a moment. The uh, second panel for this uh, subcommittee will be beginning again now. We are going to recognize this panel. Mr. Danny Werfel is the control of the Office of uh, Federal Financial Management, OFFM, within the Office of Management and Budget. He is responsible for coordinating OMB's efforts to initiate government-wide improvements in all areas of financial management, which I would assume would be a very large, complicated task. So thank you for being here. Pursuant to all committee rules, uh, the, all witnesses are sworn in before they testify. If you please rise, raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you are about to give this committee will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Let the uh, record reflect the witness answered in the affirmative. Mr. Werfel, I am going to allow you to do your opening statement as well, and then we will watch carefully for the vote time, and hopefully we will be able to get questions and uh, your statement in all at once, and we will just see how time moves from there. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Langford, Ranking Member Connolly, and members of the subcommittee for the invitation to discuss our progress in creating a more open government. On his first day in office, President Obama signed the Memorandum on Transparency and Open Government that set forth a new paradigm for an open and accountable government. Since then, the administration has been unwavering in its commitment through increased transparency, participation and collaboration to make our government more open, accountable, efficient. A lot has happened over the last two years. The administration launched the Accountable Government Initiative which outlines a performance management approach that drives agencies' top priorities, cuts waste, reforms contracting, closes the information technology gap, promotes accountability and innovation through open government, and continues our efforts to attract and motivate top talent to the Federal Government. Federal agencies are becoming more open, publishing detailed open government plans and roadmaps in compliance with our open government directive. Final agency plans feature key openness initiatives, the identification of data the public would consider highly valuable, and new agency open government web pages to facilitate greater transparency. The Federal Government's data has become the public's data. Data.gov is a Federal one-stop data sharing platform designed to democratize access to data with hundreds of thousands of data sets in a common format housed in a central location. Federal spending clearly is becoming more transparent. We launched PaymentAccuracy.gov in June 2010. This contains information about current and historical ra rates and amounts of improper payments, information on why improper payments occur, and information about what agencies are doing to reduce and recover improper payments. Recovery.gov presents unprecedented levels of transparency and accountability so that citizens can monitor the progress of the Recovery Act to track Federal contracts, grants and loans to an unprecedented degree and to provide feedback on the status and results of those investments at the community level. USAspending.gov is a one-stop site that provides the public with an understanding of how Federal dollars are spent, accounting for billions of dollars spent across executive branch agency. The site not only contains valuable information on Federal spending, but has been recently expanded to include data on subawards. The public can now see where Federal grant and contract dollars go down to the subgrantee and subcontractor levels. Providing easy access to information is critical to ensure that the government is held accountable for how it uses taxpayer dollars. While much progress has been made, going forward we need to continue our efforts to fulfill the President's State of the Union promise to build people's faith in the institution of government. We need to continue to refine the collection of data 
provide easy access to information, collaborate with our stakeholders, and encourage participation in how we conduct business. The Administration's commitment to open government is firm. The mechanisms that have been and continue to be implemented constitute a new way of doing business that will persist for decades to come. While we have accomplished many things, there is still much work, as I have mentioned. The public cannot realize the full utility of transparent Federal information if the data across our agencies are incompatible. Demonstrating our commitment to quality assurance, we have already identified potential methods for data standardization, particularly within Federal spending information. Data standardization will not only increase the usability of the information for the public, but will also achieve long-term benefits across Federal agencies. Current efforts to provide quality and real-time data to the public can consume many resources and, at times, manual processes to ensure the data from multiple systems and sources reconcile. To sustain and prove upon these efforts, interagency workgroups have been launched with a commitment to drive high-quality Federal spending information and reevaluate and realign the underlying data standards. As we continue to build upon the solid foundations of an open government, we must constantly gauge our progress against the guiding principles of transparency, participation, and collaboration. We embrace the opportunities to work with all of our stakeholders to reach the shared end goal of an open government. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today, and I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you very much. I am moving to uh, recognizing uh, Mr. Kelly, the Vice Chairman, to begin our questioning time. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Werfel, both President Obama and the OMB have stressed the importance of government that is transparent, participatory, and, co and collaborative. How is OMB enacting this guidance, and what role does OMB believe public citizens have in the process? I think the public citizens have a central role. I think one of the tenets of, uh, of open government is that accountability is necessary to uh, push the types of results and improved government performance that citizens uh, demand and that we have a responsibility uh, to reach. Uh, what we see uh, day in and day out is that the more information is shared publicly about Federal activities, in particular, for example, where our Federal dollars are going, uh, the more not only do citizens uh, participate and engage in helping keep us accountable for those dollars, uh, but the uh, government agencies themselves feel more accountable. As was mentioned in the previous pa uh, panel, sunlight is a great disinfectant. We certainly see that happening throughout government. I think the Recovery Act in particular is a great example of that. Okay, and I appreciate that. But then my question is, if we are really looking for transparency and we are looking for participation and collaboration, why weren't you willing to go ahead and appear with the rest of the panel today? Well, I'm, I would, for the record, Congressman, I would say that I am here now answering your questions and can be no, available that, that as wasn't long my question. as, as I am needed. And I understand what you are saying. But we keep talking about we want transparency, we want people to be able to have access to us, and then when we have an opportunity to appear on a panel with other folks, you decline that. It makes no sense to me. But I come from the private world. I don't come from this world. I, I really am trying to understand why we talk one way and we act an entirely different way. I think the, the elements of, uh, of the administration's policy in terms of uh, witnesses and how they appear is something that I am happy to, to spend more time with you uh, on and, and get more information for you. Again, I will repeat the bottom line is I am here. I am ready to answer any questions you have. And, and, and I recognize the fact that you are here. And, but I, I really do. In the world I come from, I absolutely hate tap dancing. And when I can't get an answer, and you do not have to be diplomatic with me. You can be direct, and I would hope you understand I am that same type of person. So whenever we have an administration that says we want to be open, we want to work with you, we want you to know everything, and then we invite them to sit here with us, the panel of the public, and they don't show up, and then the answer is, I will get back with you. I don't think that is fair to the American people, and I think it does a disservice, and it certainly discredits a policy that is supposed to be open and transparent. I yield back my time, Mr. Chairman. I don't think you can't answer that, right? Well, I, or or we are going to go back on what you did say? I, I would, you know, my direct answer to you, as you have requested, is that I am not the correct OMB official to answer the question on the Administration's policies with respect to witnesses testifying before Congress. Therefore, I have to go back and get the answer to your question. Bad policy leads to bad process, leads to 
a bad image of what the people in this country really expect of us, and they really do expect us to say what we mean, mean what we say. That is just a real basic definition of integrity. And I would suggest to you that in this town, we better start understanding what it is the American people expect from us, and they do not expect to be given the runaround on things. So I, I appreciate the fact that you are here and the fact that you can't answer, but I would appreciate in writing the answers why you could not appear with the other panel. Thank you. And I yield back my time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. I, I, I hate to be able to tell everyone this because it is going to cause a significant delay, but we have votes that have already been called on the floor of the House. Uh, we have also been asked by the people that we represent to vote for them, so we are expected to be there as well. Uh, we are going to recess temporarily. Uh, this hearing will resume in probably about 40 to 45 minutes. We will resume again uh, with the questioning and then be able to address our questions. With that, we will stand in recess.